think we could say that probably we echo that statistic. The reason is, well, as we have identified, uh, there are five categories of um, areas that get um, uh, like overlooked or where the emphasis is not evident enough. I think it's because you have the present and you have the future. So daily management is uh, not distinct from breakthrough objectives. You can't grab the future and bring it to the present. You use the present as a platform for the future. So you must deliver the present in line with the future. You must say, this first step is definitely in the right direction. If you remember, we had a speaker from British Airways Cargo, uh, Derek Brimley, and he was talking about st strategy staircases. You remember, some of you have attended his session, strategy staircases. In other words, to me, I do not divorce the daily management activity from where I want to go in the future. You know, I must use it, um, uh, if you like, as a baseline for building my future. So you build the future based on the present. I think the, the second thing is weak signals to the rest of the organization about what is the direction of the really? Where are we going? You know, the mission or the vision is not clearly uh, amplified. The other thing is the values, the purpose of the organization. What are we passionate about? What do we really mean uh, in the way we do our business? And what should we emphasize on? Uh, those linkages, basically, if they're not amplified, if they're not explicit, uh, you know, they are not going to generate the enthusiasm, the alignment, and everything else that you need uh, for propelling the organization forward. I think the other thing is the strategic intent. So having a... A, a vision statement, or having a, a powerful uh, mission statement, uh, is, is, is um, if you like, is a, a wish. Uh, the strategic intent is saying, well, this is not a wish. This is not wishful thinking. We're going to translate that into some tangible outcomes. We're going to guide it with strategies, and we're going to resource it within the organization, and we're going to deliver. And that's the process, basically of uh, strategic planning, goal deployment, or what have you. I think my own personal experience reveals that uh, we may have the top three in place, but certainly good management uh, should rely heavily on the use of data and the use of facts. When you produce a plan, for example, you look at uh, the state of health of the organization, you look at the feedback you got on your process capability, you do some benchmarking outside, you know your industry inside out, you know what world-class standards are about. You know, those inputs are so vital for giving you every chance to build, uh, uh, if you like, an, an ambitious uh, uh, future, uh, future. And the other thing is setting it, putting it on stall, uh, or, you know, and, and basically it's not going to make it happen. You have to guide it, you have to drive it, you have to live it. So the periodic reviews uh, are really saying, you know, we've got hands-on management here at a high level. We are not going to retire for 11 months and play golf. Strategy is a 12-month cycle. You must breathe it. You must live it. You must. I mean, I used to say in my early talks that if sweat is human and we expect people at the call phase to sweat, I think because it's human, we should expect senior managers to do it as well. So the plan, do, study, act is uh, as valid as it is for the lower uh, uh, levels of the organization. So if that is the process that they own, then they have to show that they are agile, they are flexible, they are responsive, they look at data, they look at numbers, they redeploy resources, and they look at process improvement and opportunities. Uh, navigation uh, is really what it is about, and bringing the analogy of cockpit management, the pilot may leave it to the co-pilot, basically, you can take a stroll and go and have a quick nap. But believe me, the pilot is there. He has to be there most of the time at the cockpit. He has to know what's going on. Or so she has to know what's going on as well. So I think let's go and revisit these five areas. Daily management not distinct from breakthrough objectives. In other words, without distinction between day-to-day -day work and breakthrough plans, people will focus on urgent matters first, don't they? You know. It's really, we had a meeting today with Unilever, and although we, 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 we try to help people build uh, this strategic initiative uh, and commit to it, uh, at the end of the day, a lot of them said, yes, but uh, by July, I still have to deliver these objectives. 
So they're trying to think, what is urgent? You know, what is important to me? So we need to really uh, place an emphasis on what is important. We need to guide people. Otherwise, people will give us what we say to them is urgent. They will abandon building the, the strategic uh, benefits, basically, uh, if, if, we, if we give them the wrong signal. That's very important. And there is a nice say there, if you're up to your neck in alligator, it's hard to maintain focus on the objective of draining the swamp. You know, let's not drain people. Let's actually give them clear focus, clear direction. You know, let's give them the vital few. This word, vital few, is so critical. 20% give 80% of the value. You can't drain the organization with initiative fatigue. You know, you cannot uh, keep uh, throwing in objectives right, left and center. You cannot have different stakeholders wanting basically, you know, to pull the reins in different directions. It must be consistent, it must be systematic, it must be clearly defined, it must be owned. So alignment is really a consequence of having that discipline and creating the buy-in. You know, so that's, that's uh, really uh, why, one of the reasons why strategies fail. I said the second thing is mission is not clear. Uh, and they are just dangling in the air. You know, they are beautiful statements, but nobody owns to them, and nobody really understands what they are about. So what we need to do is articulate in the mission statement what we are about, why we exist, and we need to really refer th this to our purpose, um, our values, uh, you know, the charter, the commitment that we make to our stakeholders, and our strategic intent, meaning we are serious here, guys. We're going to travel that way, we're going to make that journey, and we're going to deliver those objectives. At the heart of it, of course, is identifying who are the recipients of value from your business, your customers, and doing it in an objective fashion, not from a gut feel kind of perspective. Getting in the flow of the information, the intelligence, you know, the benchmarking that they talked about. But also, it's making sure that the people are enabled. The people are, before they are empowered, they have to be enabled. And what I mean by this is that a good education and understanding of where the business is, what the business needs to do, and how they are expected to support the organization in its, in its drive. That is a motivational tool in its own right, because people can then use their competencies and uh, their intelligence uh, and, and their ideas to help fulfill the wishes of the organization. Uh, and yet, you know, we um, survey after survey after survey we find that even most people don't even remember that they have a mission statement. They don't even remember one single line out of the mission statement. And that they printed, they put a lot of money having it in diaries and little uh, cards that you put in the, your back pocket and everything else. Uh, why do we do this if we don't mean to drive the organization, strategically speaking? The other thing is the link between uh, you know, the wish, where we want to be, and how we we're going to get there. So, if we say the vision is a state of the future, a state of being in the future, they also have to be reflected as documents which are comprehensive enough as a strategic intent, as an engagement, as a commitment. They should guide the organization, otherwise we don't need them. In the cockpit, all those dials that are there, the pilots need them. They guide the flights. They guide the journey. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. You know, they're not just put there just in case or, you know, because they look nice or whatever it is. So I think we have to, uh, you know, to, uh, to put these components in the right place. You know, and vision statements, therefore, are powerful uh, drivers. Uh, this is, this is interesting to me, and all my work points the finger at these last two uh, items that I wanted to talk about today. Lack of data analysis when you create the plan. Uh, and as I said, uh, and I'm not attacking senior executives for taking three-day retreat and really reviewing the business. I'm just asking a question. I'm saying, how can senior executives examine comprehensively the business of where it is now and put in place the blueprint for the future without the support of rich data, without the support of internet and, and, and documents and everything else. Question. I think in many cases, and I have facilitated such workshops myself, so probably I'm as guilty as them, 
is the fact that it's always people who argue that, who can sell themselves and their ideas, who can use flip charts, who actually convince and, and, and influence uh, what the business ought to be doing. Maybe it's exaggerated, but it happens to a large extent. I think what we're saying here is that strategic planning as a process has to be based on information. It has to look at trends, like sales trends. It has to look at customer satisfaction and the trends in, in that respect. It has to look at competitor analysis and the trends and shooting ahead of the duck where you think your competitors are trying to outsmart you. It has to look at the role of technology and how it's going to shape your industry or your businesses. But more importantly, it has to bring in the voice of your processes, the competencies that you have in place that you can deploy to create a competitive advantage. So you need an input from all of these credible, uh, critical uh, sources uh, before you start the planning process. And then the review. We could do all this work, you see. We could say, we've done it. We've got comprehensive databases. We've looked at all sources of information. Um, we've done scenarios. We've done what-ifs and everything else. If you abdicate the responsibility there and then, it will remain a beautiful blueprint that gets filed away or even locked uh, away as a confidential document. What we're saying is, no, enable the organization. Cascade it down. Insist on integrating it, if you like, with your performance management, you know, with your appraisals, with the reward and recognition schemes that you have, with your people development, and so on and so forth. That's enabling the organization. Strategic planning must enable the organization. Because if you don't monitor, if you don't try to integrate, uh, if you like, you know, nothing will happen. You'll be uh, doing the hit and miss kind of uh, uh, syndrome. So, the most important step is reviewing. Uh, as it says here, you inspect what you expect. Lack of periodic review and process improvement also means uh, that if you uh, insist on reviews, you also need a process for those. In other words, periodic reviews means they take in place on time uh, through the right intervals. So on a regular basis, if it is quarterly, it's quarterly. If it is at the lower level, it is monthly, it's monthly. At the lower level still, if it is weekly, it's weekly. In other words, reviews mean uh, don't try to impress. Be realistic. Say it as, as is. I, and some people use the, uh, you know, the traffic uh, symbols, uh, green, red, and amber, you know, just to be simple, but... Uh, to, to, to pass the, the right message. So come as you are. Uh, if you spend more time creating fancy pie charts and bar charts and, and trying to impress, that means you're not really focused on the improvement itself. Use the facts. If it is amber, say it's amber, we have a little bit of bother, uh, you know, delivering this uh, KPI. But the, the good news is we are doing something about it. You know, oh, we've missed the target for this year. That's not the end of Earth, you know. The pilot might want to finish the, the trip, a long haul, in 12 hours and 15 minutes. But we may encounter some severe weather on the way. You know, it has disturbed the, the, the you know, the end objective. But, you know, uh, as long as we get there safely, you know, it's okay to be a few minutes late. So if we miss a target, but we report that we are doing something about it. To me, that's more important. This is what good management is about. This is what stewardship is about. So be honest and open uh, and, and understand that process management is really powerful in that sense. And look at the, the bread and butter first because your survival depends on the immediate. And then follow it by the immediate, intermediate and the long-term future. But you cannot really look at the future without analyzing the present. So, just to sum up, I mean, I would like to say, before I hand over to Keith, that from our perspective, strategic planning is an essential element of business success. Uh, I think we ought to really impart the message that we are not in the business of producing business plans. We are in the business of stewardship. We are in the business of enabling the organization to fulfill its short-term and long-term objectives. Uh, and I think we need to instigate a mentality which is really uh, saying 
you know, the how bit is as important as the what bit. You know, having a policy deployment process, uh, understanding what the vision statement means, understanding what the mission, mission statement is, uh, bringing to life, if you like, the importance of values, uh, inculcating the values within the organization so that people are saying, you know, I'm passionate about this, this is the journey I want to make, you know, and I share those values, you know, and, and this might be a trivial activity to many people, but let me tell you, it's fundamentally important for senior managers, and the more time they spend on the soft side, the more chance they have got to enable their organizations and to deliver, uh, if you like, long-term objectives. So, I think you have got in your pack just an example of uh, the components of uh, a business plan process, a goal development process. You have to formulate uh, the direction in the future. You have a stage which is about planning what you want to achieve, what are the objectives and the targets, where are the vital few areas, um, and what to do about resources and uh, the cascade and everything else. And you have uh, the measurement and review uh, stage last. So in other words, the linkages that you want to produce in a business organization is that the vision and the planning process put together enable the performance within the organization. So what direction you give to the business and how it's going to perform and deliver are integrated and uh, working in synergy. I use this model quite a lot, you see. For some of you who are not familiar with the uh, visioning process, uh, this Colin and Porras model, it appeared in California Business Review, I think in 1993. They are saying that if you want to audit a world-class organization, you will search first and foremost about what they call the guiding philosophy. The guiding philosophy uh, is not driven by time. You know, core belief, purpose, and values are really, uh, uh, you know, the raison d'etre for business. I mean, for example, Merck's, uh, you know, they don't say we're in the business to produce drugs and uh, be the market leader. They will say our purpose is to eradicate human disease. I mean, that's very deep, isn't it? Because if everybody who works for Merck believes in that, uh, and that becomes the purpose of the organization being created in the first place, it will guide it regardless of time, you know, the state of health of the business, uh, whether it's an e-business or whether it's a, a conventional business and so on. So that's a component uh, that, that, that we have to have in place. The other thing is the environment, you know. We cannot control the environment, but we must operate within that environment. Turbulence, good times, you know, you have technology, regulation, um, uh, you know, the political influence, uh, globalization on the one hand. Loads of factors which will create disturbance to the business. But we need to try and guide and uh, steer the business with good understanding and good feel uh, for that environment. The tangible image, and look at this, guiding philosophy is regardless of time. The tangible image is actually what we can touch and feel, and is bound by time. It's really saying, for the next five years, I visualize, we visualize as a business, to be number one, to be number five, to deliver unique propositions to our customers, and whatever. So... You need to live that vivid description, that tangibility, by making sure that your mission statement does not remain a mission statement, but actually is measured, is, is, is broken down into critical factors of success and uh, uh, objectives or KPIs or whatever you want. So we have to look at uh, the whole thing in totality. We cannot just say, I have a mission now, what do I do next? You know, go back to the guiding philosophy. Go back and look at the values and so on. As uh, Kenichi Omi says, of course it's important to take the competition into account. But in making strategy, uh, uh, that should not come first. What could, should come first is painstaking attention to the needs of the customer. And that's at the heart of uh, the business plan. That's at the heart of all the endeavors that any organization wants to achieve in the short and long term uh, reviews.